Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on channels television. A quick reminder of our top stories now. Federal government says it's not considering severing ties with South Africa, even as the House of Representatives pledges funding for victims of xenophobic attacks wishing to take legal action. Proposed airlifting of Nigerians from South Africa by Air Peace suffers setback as carrier sites ongoing registration of those built to return as reason for delay. President Buhari and other world leaders commiserate with the people of Zimbabwe over the death of former leader Robert Mugabe. And UK opposition parties agree to block Prime Minister Boris Johnson's call for a snap election, saying he's trying to force through a no-deal Brexit. For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website is channelstv.com. YouTube.com forward slash channelsweb has videos of our shows. And here are some pictures that you sent into our eyewitness portal. Oh, this first image is from Kiana local government area of Nasara State showing this fallen breach. According to our eyewitness, this is the only link out of the area. He laments that at the moment, residents have been trapped in. He wants the state government to come to their rescue. And to this next image showing these people whom our eyewitness describes as onlookers after an accident. Our eyewitness sent this in from Ijebudi in Ogun State. He says that this mishap caused a long gridlock on that road. And there is no information as to the cause of this. Our final image is from Olufemi Ogunshola Street at the Ogbaijai area of Lagos State showing this fence made of roofing sheets, which our eyewitness says is blocking a major road. He accuses a resident of taking over the piece of land and detailing military and police personnel to force residents away. He laments the hardship this is putting on residents and appeals to the state government to look into it. We do sincerely thank you for sending in those pictures as we ask that you keep them coming. The National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, the APC, Mr. Adams Oshomele, has for the first time reacted personally to the disagreements between him and the Governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki. The APC leader is reacting to series of allegations against him since the reports of the rift between the two politicians came to light. In an exclusive interview with Channel's Television, Mr. Oshomele says that his differences with the Governor are strictly on governance issues and the need to carry political players in the state along. What I expected the governor to do, which should be the benefit of continuity, because we, we told the two people, we are continuing from where I stop. The benefit that ought to accrue is that the governor continue with these projects so that I do people can see the benefit. Even if I was succeeded, by PDP government. I don't think they would have shut that hospital for as long as the governor did. So now, I will ask you, are these issues personal to me? We have no argument over money. We have no argument over appointment. If I, in the meeting that we had with four governors, including Governor Bagudu, I asked the governor, how many commissioners did I nominate to your cabinet? He agreed I only nominated one person. Only one out of more than 20 commissioners. Not, not many Nigerians will believe that. Because for me, I was out of government, and I've already convinced myself that the day I step out of government, that's it. And after that first meeting, the governor decided to remove even that war commissioner along with seven others. But that's not my business. He has a right to appoint, remove, appoint, remove. Those are government discretion. The governor can never tell you that I have interfered in his choice of project and so on. The only thing I feel a bit worried about is the fact that some of the projects we started together have been abandoned. There is no way to solve disagreement without talking to the aggrieved parties. Let me assure you, this governor is not under threat. It is those who, are much, who make money from crisis, what I call merchants of confusion. They are only relevant when there is a fight. Who can tell the governor, oh, don't worry, they want to impeach you. The governor should ask himself, what has he done to deserve impeachment? What will I gain if Godwin does not run second term? He should surely go to run the second term. 
if I did what I did, whether he acknowledged it or not, but people know what I did to support him to be, what comfort will I have if he's terminated halfway? The traffic along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway seems to have intensified and motorists driving in and out of the commercial city of Lagos have been facing tough times on that road. Commuters blame the situation on the construction work on the road and broken down trucks. Our correspondent Olu Phillips, who has been keeping an eye on that road, now reports. <laughs> Day 5 of the partial closure of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Kara Bridge earns diversion. <laughs> Consequent upon the diversion which started this week, motorists just have to adjust to the new pace of movement. <laughs> enter, For vehicles inbound Lagos, the rush hour takes a toll on their travel time. That can be done to improve this situation or we just have to go through this? Uh, well, I guess I don't think there's anything they can do. I think we just have to bear with it while it lasts. How long have you been in this trap? Yeah, just about two hours ago. From where to where, sir? From uh, the half of the bridge, of the long bridge to here. Those who can't stand the rigor are charting parts unknown. Safety officers and traffic chaperone have the assessment of the flow. <laughs> this place is always notorious, especially if you have just one breakdown. That is, what, that is why we have told people as much as possible, let them maintain their vehicles so that we don't experience any breakdown. Once there is a breakdown, there is a buildup of traffic. We have our tow truck that will always do the job when a vehicle breaks down. We are in touch with other tow truck companies that will always call for assistance when we are about to be overwhelmed. But I pray that that doesn't happen. We are on top of the situation. The diversion is one of the two variables leading to the traffic flow interruptions. The other is the reconstruction of the road proper, which covers 600 meters of this axis. Officials say work plan is on schedule as regards completion date. Hello, Phillips. Channels Television News. You're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's cross over to our Abuja studios now, where Mark Bay Ogun Yusuf is standing by to take us through a couple of more stories. Mark Bay, good to see you. Hello, Gimba. It's good to see you as well. It's good to see that you're also weathering the traffic situation pretty Indeed. well. Well, welcome our viewers to Abuja Studios and we start with this story. The Nigerian Immigration Service has given illegal migrants a 90-day period within which to register with the service or face penalties. And in order to compile a comprehensive database of who comes in and out of the country, the Controller General of the service says airport will henceforth capture biometrics of foreigners. The free e-registration process, which is currently ongoing in five states of the Federation, has successfully registered over 4,000 migrants between July and September this year, while the 90-day amnesty will lapse on the 11th of January next year. If you come to the airport today, Oland border of Nigeria, you want to enter Nigeria, and you know you are going to stay for more than 90 days, even before the 90 days you are expected to register. Or oh, after the 90 days, you must reach that because if you don't, you have committed offense. But in order to encourage migrants to register, Mr. President gave an amnesty for six months. This registration shows that it will end 21st of, 21st of uh, next month, in January. It only affects those who are already in Nigeria when the amnesty was given. It means after Mr. President's inauguration, if you have been in Nigeria and you are staying irregularly, I didn't say when you have done an armed robbery or you have uh, stolen Nigerian money or done anything. But if you are staying irregularly in Nigeria, Mr. President has given you amnesty up to January for you to register. Even if you don't have any paper, when you register, we'll advise you to go and get passport in your embassy. We'll give you time to go and get a passport so that we'll register you. The law says now that if you come and register, you will be considered as if you are seeking to enter Nigeria for the first time. 
which means you will comply with the condition. There has been a lot of misconception uh, that the amnesty is allowing somebody to be a citizen of Nigeria. It's not. And now a lecturer with the Department of Mathematical Science, Ondo State University of Science and Technology, Professor Gideon Okedayo, has been reportedly kidnapped. Professor Okedayo was said to be traveling to Igara in Kogi State when he was abducted. The Chairman Joint Action Committee of Staff Unions in the Institution, Mr. Dayo Temola, who confirmed the incident, wants the police command and the Ondo State Government to rescue the victim. Mr. Temala also challenges the police to be proactive and go beyond routine checks on the roads. Meanwhile, the police public relations officer in Ondo State, Mr. Femi Joseph, confirmed the incident but said it did not happen within its jurisdiction. Now, members of the concerned Benue pensioners have continued to stage a protest at the entrance into the government house, Makudi, rejecting the 611 million naira payment proposal by the state government. Addressing journalists, the leader of the group, Mr. Peter Kiado, demands that pensioners in the state be placed on first-line charge before payments of salaries to civil servants. The group had also rejected another proposal by Governor Samuel Otom to source a 40 billion naira bond to clear their pension arrears. For the third day running, members of the concerned Benue pensioners, the faction of the National Union of Pensioners, continue to occupy the government house entrance in Makodi. <laughs> Governor Samuel Otom, who had been out of his state, arrives to engage with the faction. He explains that the state is having challenges in meeting its financial obligations. He directs that the April and May 2019 pension arrears be paid, but the group disagrees. Pensioners are paid first. During the time of coming, we pay first. During the time of the fact, we pay first. By your time, we will be ready. Why? It's our right. It's considered right. It's our right. We are citizens. Right. Right. We are supposed to be paid first. We are dying. If you tell the statistics of pension and die, it's a pity. I have made that appeal to them, and I want them to reason amongst themselves. I'm not lying to them. I have not diverted money to them and uh, to any other uh, use. And so I believe that they will reason. But I have said, as a palliative measure, by Monday, Tuesday, the other people who have not received uh, uh, April and May were arranging with the bank to have an overdraft to pay them, which is about 611 million. And that will pay. So However, yes. the leadership of the National Union of Pensioners in Benue State insists that the group is out to make mischief. They are like wounded lions. When you suspend somebody and the man gets to court and his matter is not of, of it, he will certainly be white. That's part of the issue, number one. Number two is that they have gone to mobilize pensioners who have no idea of what is really on the ground. As it stands, the government approach through the domestication of the Pension Act, which allows states to access loans, may be the likely solution to the pension impasse, as these protesters have refused to shift ground. When the news at 10 returns, UK opposition parties agreed to block Prime Minister Boris Johnson's call for a snap election, saying he's trying to force through a no-deal Brexit. That's on the international scene with Around the World in 5. Do join us again.